Let's work through some examples of conditional probability so that we can build up our intuition a little bit more. Okay, um, so for the purposes of this video, let's say we've developed a quick, cheap test for a disease and we want to understand um, what it means to get a positive result from that test. You could also think about this as um, a test you've designed to detect faults um, in a circuit or in some part that you've manufactured. It doesn't really matter. We're just sticking with this one uh, motivation to keep it simple. So let's let the event A be the event that the subject has the disease, so they actually have it, and B is the event that the test we've designed is positive. Okay, and we've done a study, and our study has convinced us that given that the subject has the disease, this test is positive with probability four-fifths, so 80% of the time. Okay, what that tells us is the probability of B given A, so that's actually what this is, sentence is describing, that's four-fifths. Okay, the complement property will also tell us that the probability that B complement occurs given A is one-fifth because probability has to add up to one. So given that the subject has the disease, that's A, the test is negative with probability one-fifth, the other 20% of the time. Given that the subject is healthy, that's A complement, the test is negative with probability three-fourths, okay? So maybe it has a different false positive and false negative rate. That's basically what's happening here. And so what this is telling us is the probability of B complement test negative given A complement subject healthy, that's three-fourths. The complement property will tell us that the probability of B given A complement is one-fourth. Note that the complement property only allows us to apply the complement to the left-hand side of the conditioning. It does not allow us to modify the right-hand side. And without enough information, we might not be able to specify um, all of these values, right? Okay, let's say we also know that the disease is prevalent in one out of three subjects at the moment. So we can say with some confidence the probability of A is just one third, and by the complement property that means that um, two thirds of subjects do not have the disease. So probability of A complement is two thirds. What we're ultimately interested in knowing is what is the probability that the subject has the disease given that the test is positive, okay? And we could go ahead and compute this directly here. It wouldn't take us very long, but we're gonna progressively build our way up to this and visualize a lot of what's going on along the way. In particular, what we're gonna do to build up our intuition is look at a conditional probability tree. You do not need to draw this tree to solve every problem. You'll probably quickly get used to not having this tree um, but it's useful when you get started just so that you can see where everything goes. So the way you should think about this is on the very left, you have the root, and that is the sample space, omega, which we usually don't write, but it's implicitly cap capital omega. So then I have this top branch going to A, this bottom branch going to A complement. Next, I'm going to go to A intersect B and A intersect B complement, and then from A complement, I go to A complement intersect B, and A complement intersect B complement. On this first branch to A, I write one third because that's the probability of seeing A. And on the other branch, I write two thirds because that's the probability of seeing A complement. The next branch is a little trickier. I have to write conditional probabilities. Once I start at A, I'm conditioning on A having occurred. So starting from the node A, it's like I've conditioned on A. So it's from to go from A to A intersect B, that's like multiplying by the conditional probability of B given A, and we know that that's four-fifths. The other branch is the probability of B complement given A, that's one-fifth. On the bottom half, I have one-fourth, that's the probability of B given A complement, and three-fourths, that's the probability of B complement given A complement. So somewhere I need to get these values in order to fill out this tree. And so we already have them, and that's where I got them. So what is the probability that the subject has the disease, okay? And remember, uh, just as we defined on the previous slide, the subject has the disease is the event A. And the thing we wanna know is what's the probability that they have the disease and the test is positive, okay? So what is the 
intersection of this event A with this event B. All right, that's what I'm interested in knowing. Probability of A intersect B. And I know that I can get things like the intersections with the multiplication rule. So probability of A times the probability of B given A. This is the multiplication rule. That's what we learned in the previous video. So I can just apply this idea, even without the probability tree, multiply a third times four fifths, and I get four out of 15. So I didn't need the probability tree to do this. I could have looked up the values in the tree, or I could have looked at the previous slide, but this is the multiplication rule and how I use it in this context. I could also use the tree directly. So for an event that appears directly on the conditional probability tree, right? So in this case, I can see that A intersect B is one of the nodes. What I can do to get its probability, so I want to compute the probability, is I start from the left-hand side, from the root, okay? And I multiply all of the values along the way from the root to the event that I'm interested in. In this case, the event is all the way at the right, but that doesn't have to be true, okay? So how am I going to do this? I want A intersect B, and so I follow this green path from the left to the right to get to A intersect B, and the values I encounter are a third times four-fifths, and that's four-fifteenths, and that's exactly the same calculation I did above. So this is just a way of visualizing this calculation. If I was interested in an event in the middle of the tree, and you can have trees with um, greater depths than two, you can do the same thing. You just stop at the event you're interested in and multiply your way there. Okay, how about I ask, what is the probability that the test that I run is positive? With no other condition, I just am interested in knowing what's the probability the test is positive. This is the event B. All right, well, the probability of B I can get by the law of total probability. I can decompose it into things that I already have. I have things about the probability of A, and I have things about the probability of B given A. So probability of A times probability of B given A, plus probability of A complement times the probability of B given A complement. This is the law of total probability for figuring out the probability of an event. That's a third times four fifths plus two thirds times one fourth. I could have looked up these values in the tree or on the first slide. Um, and I can just complete this calculation to get 16 plus 10 over 60, simplify a bit down, and ultimately I get 13 over 30. Okay, what if I want to use the tree directly? So to find the probability of an event that appears on the tree, but it doesn't appear directly, so it only appears as parts of other events. Well, this is a little bit more tricky, but it's still pretty easy. So what I need to do is I need to find all of the nodes that include the event that I'm interested in, and they all need to be at the same depth. And you should pick the easiest depth available to you. So in this case, um, I'm looking at the rightmost side, but that might not always be true. So here I'm going to circle A intersect B and A complement intersect B because those both include B. I don't circle um, B, the B complement events because those are not what I'm interested in. And all I'm going to do is add up the probabilities of these nodes. And I remember from the previous slide, the way I get the probability of nodes is I just trace paths to them like this, and I multiply the probabilities that I encounter along those paths. Right, so a third times four fifths is the probability of A intersect B, and two thirds times one fourth is the probability of A complement intersect B. And that ends up just being 13 over 30. Okay, finally, let's go back to the first question we asked. What is the probability that a subject has the disease? Right, so what's the probability they actually have the disease given that the test is positive, okay? So this is not something we're given explicitly. What this is is probability of A given B. And what I need to do is use Bayes' rule because what I'm trying to do is flip the conditioning around. That's what Bayes' rule is for, okay? And so to flip the conditioning, what I do is I take the probability of B given A, which I have, 
times the probability of A, which I also have, divided by the probability of B, which I got in the previous problem. So this I have, that's sitting right there. This I have, it's sitting there in blue. And this probability of B, I already computed on the previous slide. Okay, so again, I don't need the tree for this. I could just look up all the values if I just had the values. And I can just plug these in, and I'm going to get um, 8 over 13. Great. Um, I can also get this directly using the tree. It's a little bit um, more involved. So what I need to do, and it's a little less visual. So what I need to do is first remember the definition of conditional probability, because you're ultimately just asking me a conditional probability question. What is the probability of event A given event B? And whenever in doubt, always go to the definition of conditional probability. Okay, you'll never go wrong with that. Probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. Okay, well, how do I get these probabilities? This intersection I can just find on the tree and make my way to it. And I know that to get the probability is just a third times four fifths. So that's one. And then what about the probability of B? Well, we saw on the previous slide how to compute that. I find the events that include B and I find my way to them and I just add up their probabilities. So I have a third times four fifths plus two thirds times one fourth. Okay, if I put all this together, I get four over 15 divided by 13 over 30. And again, I'm gonna get eight over 13, which I expected.